How's it going, tiny little hot dog cuties? Ben here, and today we are going to be going over how to survive first year of medical school without dying because I'm assuming, the most of you that's going to be watching this video, you've been accepted to medical school this cycle and you are interested in knowing what the first year of medical school is like, and I'm here to tell you that it's hell. It's hell. It's like hell on earth. And that you guys want to not go in completely blind. So yeah, that's why I'm making this video. If you are a first year medical student and you're watching it in your second semester of medical school, it might be a bit of a stretch to watch this video and think you're going to survive because you should have had good test taking and studying habits already. But if you haven't had and you guys are on the border of failing or succeeding, and this may this video may help, but I think you should have helped yourself before that. But let's get right down to it. Let's talk about it. Wait, actually, before we get right down to it, there's some couple of announcements that I have to make for you guys. First big announcement. Remember that last video I made about being mortified to wear my white coat? Well, I just got really good news that my school has ordered my new one out. So I should be getting it before spring break, which is around the second week of March. So thumbs up guys thank you guys so much for your support I will be getting a new white coat and I'm so happy so so happy to burn the other one that I have <laughs> when I get the new one and when I do get that new white coat I will put it on for you guys give you guys a little bit of a runway show I guess so you guys can see what that white coat looks like okay before we get started this video this video was actually recommended by one of you tiny little hot dog cuties out there who asked specifically what are my studying habits but I didn't just want to make a video about how I studied for the first year of medical school I wanted to be a little bit more interesting add a little pizzazz to the title so I so I titled it how to not die in the first year of medical school because believe it or not the way I study may not be the same way that you study and I've mentioned that before in my other studying oriented types of videos but People just study differently and different medical schools advise you to study a, a certain way and different medical schools have different structures where you have to study in a different way. But there are three very, very, very important things that every single medical school student should do for surviving medical school first year because I cannot speak for second year because I'm not a second year medical student nor do I have any sort of expertise in second year material. But I'm here to give you advice um first year and how to survive first year regardless of what institution what year not year what country what country you are in because most md curriculums are standardized but if you want to get into a u.s residency program these are the things that you should be using to study and especially if you are a u.s medical student these are the things you should be using to pass all your exams and even your boards and I call these three major things that is universal regardless of what kind of MD student you are at whatever medical school at whatever state you should follow so here we get started with the Holy Trinity the number one Holy Trinity Trinity Holy Trinity number one that you should follow is spaced repetition I don't care what program you're using what you're doing you should always 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 be supplementing the material that you are studying with spaced repetition. What is what is what is spaced repetition? Well, spaced repetition is when you write down your notes, you compile it in a way that you'll see those notes again and again throughout your study period in a block. So, let's say you do in the first week of class you do renal physiology, the way you do space re repetition is that you will be seeing that renal physiology bits and pieces, maybe a good chunks of it, in weeks two, three, and four before the block ends. You'll be consistently seeing it every now and again. Materials from the first week, the second week, and third week interconnected with everything else that you're studying for. So you will be constantly exposed to things that you've learned previously so that you don't forget it. Space repetition is key. And for me, the way that I I get my daily dose of spaced repetition is that I use a program called Anki. You guys have probably heard of it. If you haven't, it is basically like Quizlet, but 10 times, maybe a billion times 
better than Quizlet. Not as intuitive. Quizlet tends to be a bit more intuitive and user friendly. But what I do recommend for you guys if you are going into medical school or you have to do any sort of coursework if you are not in medical school that requires spaced repetition and retaining information using Anki. And if you're asking me, Ben, how do I use Anki? I'm not the person to teach you that in this video because it is very complicated. I'll be putting YouTube video links down below to people who have used Anki, who know how to use Anki well, and videos that I have used to organize my Anki cards. It's basically flashcards, but you, it's, it's like better than flashcards. It's like very organized flashcards to help you retain as much information as possible in a short period of time. So, number one of the Holy Trinity is spaced repetition. And it's also the number one way you can memorize things and not lose it. Not have it go in one ear and not the other. Holy Trinity number two is doing practice problems. I know, I know, shocking. But there are, there are people, including me, who think that if I memorize everything, and to the point where I get everything, I understand everything. It's not just it's not just rote memorization. If I understand everything, I'll be able to ace every single exam that comes my way. That is not true, guys. That is not true. If you've seen that video about me um, basically bombing some of the exams in my second block in medical school and me scurrying to fix the issues that I had, you would know that my biggest issue when I was struggling in that block was because I wasn't doing enough practice problems. Regardless of how much I understood everything that was taught to me, regardless of how much I knew everything that was taught to me, regardless of how much I, how well I could teach and regurgitate everything that was taught to me, because I didn't do practice problems similar to the ones on the exam, similar to the ones on the US MLEs, and similar to the ones on the boards, I struggled because you may know everything, but questions are out there to catch you by surprise. Those questions are worded specifically so that if you haven't looked at questions like that before, you're gonna screw up regardless of whether or not you know that information. So, Holy Trinity number two, in addition to spaced repetition of the material that is taught to you, also incorporate practice problems routinely throughout your studying. Maybe let's aim for 30 minutes a day of doing questions, doing questions related to whatever it is that you learned on that topic, doing those questions and doing it repeatedly. I wouldn't say every single day, but you could do it every weekend, three days a week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Just make sure you are exposed to the types of questions that will ask you in your exams pertaining to the topic that you are currently learning. If you have those two holy trinities, you are solid. You are solid to pass the exams. I'll say solid. And the third the third Holy Trinity will actually make you go above and beyond. Which is kind of punny because the third Holy Trinity is boards and beyond. And I know some of you guys are thinking right now, Ben, I thought you were the type of person to always, always, always advocate for free and accessible, free and accessible material. And yes, I always do. I hate to ask people, I hate to give advice to people where I'm asking them to go out and buy things. I hate doing that. I don't like where people have to spend a lot of money for something. But if you follow the first two Holy Trinities, you, I can, if you don't want to follow the third one, it's totally fine. But the third one will just, will just create a really good foundation for everything that you have learned and will help you throughout all of medical school and even beyond medical school and that's why I highly 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 recommend boards and beyond it's a video series created by dr. Jason Ryan I believe from the University of Connecticut School of Medicine I'm not sure I will have an asterisk somewhere down here and verify for you guys if that's correct or not but J dr. Jason Ryan makes video a short video series covering every single topic that you will learn in your first year of medical school and some second year topics and he does it extremely, extremely well. He can cover, he can cover two lectures within 30 minutes. Two lectures that I have to sit through in medical school, that's around three hours of lecturing from a professor. He can cover in 30 minutes effectively and I retain that information. 
His material is so, so, so good. And I recommend it. If you guys have the money to spare, if you guys want to just hit that other tier, hit that other level of score performance, I recommend Boards and Beyond. If you don't, that's completely fine. Do practice problems and do spaced repetition. Anki is free and practice problems are wide spread throughout the internet on whatever topic that you want to do. There's, and of course your school should give you some question banks that you can practice with because my school has, my school gave us a free question bank and it had over 20,000 questions and I use it to do practice problems. I also have other resources like textbooks with practice problems and things like that that were all free for me when I entered the medical school that I'm at. But just, I, if you guys have the funds, use that extra little cash to get Boards and Beyond for first year. I know second year there's some other resources that everybody highly recommends that you have to go out of your way and pay for. I will be covering that second year when I'm actually using that material so I can accurately give you the, the opinion. I can give you my accurate opinion on whether or not I found them helpful or not, but I can tell you guys specifically Boards and Beyond has been saving my life before all the exams, before my mini boards. Spe specifically for my biochemistry man mini board, I got around the national average uh, for my biochemistry national board examination because of Boards and Beyond. I did not read BRS. BRS was way too long for me to cover in three days. So all I did was read Boards and Beyond and do practice problems and do space repetition. And guess what, guys? I got the national average for the biochemistry mini board. And some of you who aren't in med school may be thinking national average. Isn't that like kind of like an okay score? No, this is the national average of all medical students, guys. Completely crazy geniuses that you're competing against. So to get a national average score, it's good. It's good. It gives you a good solid foundation of how you'll do in the US MLE. And this was my fourth, first board exam getting the national average. So there's, there's lots of room for improvement because I haven't done anything like that before. So there you have it guys. Those are the three most important things that every medical student should be utilizing so that they don't die in medical school because it took me a little bit, took me a while to figure it out, especially when it came to Holy Trinity number two, doing practice problems. For some reason, I thought like I didn't need to do practice problems as long as I knew everything. That is not true at all. Don't skimp out on that, on those practice problems. And of course, Space Repetition and Boards and Beyond will help you as well. And of course, None of my videos are sponsored. Boards and Beyond isn't sponsoring me. This is from my classmates, people who I've talked to at other medical schools, and my personal experience that Boards and Beyond has saved all of our butts. I am so serious. It has saved me a lot of gray hairs. I don't, my hair hasn't started graying yet, uh, thanks to Boards and Beyond, but I'm pretty sure once I hit second year, it's gonna get grayer. Maybe Patoma will be able to help me out with that. But until then, if you haven't started medical school, please take my advice to heart. And for very, very specific study schedules and things like that, I don't like sharing that information because I think that everybody's studying mechanics are different. The best way to know how to study in medical school in general is to ask your classmates, ask your upperclassmen, because every block is different. The way you study for one block may be different on how you study for another block. I've covered this in my other videos. Please, I do recommend that you guys check them out. But every block is different. Be willing to be flexible. But we're not going to talk about that. That was covered in another video. Go ahead and watch that one. And you guys will be set. Just follow the Holy Trinity, guys. Uh, congratulations if you've gotten into medical school and uh, you guys are probably super super excited i remember last year when i got my acceptance i could not wait to start you will regret that within your second month of medical school i'm just kidding guys medical school is great it's rewarding but it's also very very challenging be ready for that and i hope i hope if you follow those holy trinity rules you guys will do great and i'm not i'm not an overachiever 
I've never been an overachiever. I've always been someone who wants to give my very best, but not at the expense of other things in my life. You know, I, I really value my creativity. I really value being out in the community. So I do not, I do not always aim to get all A's in medical school. My job in medical school is to be the best physician I can be without sacrificing anything else in my life that I find fulfilling for me. Now, there are people who find that only medical school is fulfilling to them, only academics is fulfilling to them, and they will reach out for those A's. Watch their videos. There's tons of YouTubers out there who think that way. I'm not dissing them or anything like that. That's something to really, really admire. That's just not how I am. I'm only speaking for the average medical student because I consider myself the average medical student. I'm not special. I'm not amazing. I'm just me, and I just want to be a good physician. I love you guys. I hope this video was helpful. I know I ramble a lot, but I hope you guys <laughs> can hear me through all of this rambling, and you like watching my videos enough to see myself ramble for so long. And I'll see you on the next video. Mwah. And thank you so much to the tiny little hot dog cutie who recommended me to make a video about how I study. Have a great one. This is Ben.